the John Greenwood's 1971 Corvette Stars and Stripes Sebring. Coming up next. Hello everybody, welcome back to another great Corvette unboxing video where today we get to look at a Sebring edition race car. This course is John Greenwood's 1971 Stars and Stripes Corvette kit from Ravel. Now, before we get down to the racing pit, don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so that every time I make a new video, you are the first to see it. Uh, this model kit is loaned to us today by James, good friend. It's not available for the store, but if you want to know what's online for us, what we're selling down here at Monster Hobbies for model cars, check us out at www.monster-hobbies.ca. And don't forget to subscribe to our newsletter because if you do, you get exclusive discounts and flyers coming into your email box that'll tell you how to save money on all these great model kits. So without further ado, let's go down to the racing pit and inspect the John Greenwood's 1971 Sebring Corvette. And now we go all the way back to the track at Sebring 1971, where we get to look at John Greenwood's Stars and Stripes Corvette kit by Ravel Monogram. So here again we've got another awesome box art on the cover. I always like these uh, traditional style drawn uh, images that we have here. This of course is 125th scale model for ages 10 and up. Skill level 2, so paint and glue is required. We turn up the side of the box here. Just zoom in a little bit. You can see all the, the write-up on there. And there's our paint guides. The end of the box looks much like the cover of the box. And then here we've got the nice treat of images of the built-up model. The old star and stripes. And there we go for the engine. Now, this is still sealed. Another model kit loaned to us by our good friend James. And he's allowed me to open it. So, let's open it. Okay. Very exciting. <laughs> Tear into some fresh plastic. Okay, try not to poke myself with the knife. <laughs> All right. So we'll just take off the lid of this. Maybe if I can get there. Wow. This is really on there. Okay. Pardon my struggles here. This is all done live, folks. <laughs> okay. So as you can see inside, we have our glass, which is not in a bag, but luckily on top of other bags. So James, I'm probably going to throw that in the Ziploc later on. And then here we have our white plastic. Now there's one thing about this Sebring car, it's actually, if you look at the side vents, as compared to the earlier um, 1970s videos of Corvettes, this one is a 68. But it was a car that uh, was raced in 69. So actually, it's interesting, it's all these stock components inside here. So it's not too much difference from the stock kit. And of course here we have our racing tires. These are different. They're a little wider in the back, narrower in the front. Then we've got our chrome, glorious chrome. It's very much like the Baldwin Motion Chrome from that kit. So we'll find out what makes us different in a minute here. And of course we have our decal sheet. I'm going to save this the best to last, for last, so you won't be able to see it right away. And then we've got our instruction sheet. And that's it. So I'll clear all this out of the way, and then we'll take a look at the instructions. Here we have our instruction sheet for John Greenwood's Stars and Stripes Corvette from Sebring 1971. I'm going to uh, copy these into the description and leave it all down below for you guys. So what I'll do is just zip this back a bit and you can get the full scope of these instruction sheets. Which of course is the big fold out page style. The Ravel was nice enough to leave us the colors here that we're going to need in the sidebar. And of course there's the read before you begin and en you know, français. Okay, so we'll just open this up here. 
And yes, as you can see, this is very much the Baldwin Motion Corvette, just reboxed, which is kind of a shame. But anyway, it's not a bad kit. So let's just take a look at this. So here we have our engine block, the right and left hand sides, the cylinder head, the valve covers, of course, our intake manifold, the distributor, the carburetor, and the air cleaner, as well as the water pump, the alternator, and our pulleys and fan. And then over in here we have the fuel pump which goes on, as well as our starter motor. Our next two panels show our rear and front suspensions, which of course is this nice multi-piece differential consisting of four pieces. So we have the differential top, which goes on to the trailing arm assembly, the rear springs, and the differential bottom. I'm guessing? No, wait. Oh, I see what they're doing. So you've got the bottom and the cover goes on there, and then you turn it over and you put your springs on. So it's really three pieces. And then here we have our shock absorbers going on to the frame as well. And then for our front assembly, we have the lower suspension, the chrome uh, coil springs, which are two parts. They all glue together, and then we have our tie rod up front. Panel 4 shows us our chassis assembly with the two pieces of the radiator going together and then our frame cross member up under here. And down here we have our steering box gluing onto the frame and then our completed engine with the lower radiator hose and the drive shaft will all hook up to our chassis. And then if we just move this down a little bit you'll see the upper radiator, radiator hose going onto the radiator and then our two A-arms here. And all this completes and builds nicely to give us our chassis of our Corvette. Panel 5 shows our wheel and tire assembly going together and here of course we have the nice Krager type mag wheels which go into our tire with the wheel back on the back. These all pop onto little pins so remember to scrape the seam lines in here so you don't ac accidentally lock the wheel in place. And our rear tires go on the same way. Actually these are... yeah okay. Yeah, rear tires. <laughs> so they go together. Make sure you get the seam lines off of there and click it on because this has a button head on there and once it goes on it won't come off. So if you have made a mistake you're gonna be stuck. And in panel 6 here we have our interior assembly and this is where the Sebring Corvette really starts to come alive because we have door panels which are blanked out which will go into our interior bucket. It says to clean out holes for the roll bar, so there is a little bit of more racing action going on here. And here we have our dashboard, and unfortunately it's a race-style dashboard, which is nothing wrong with racing. But if you want to hear Maggie May by Rod Stewart, well, there's no way to hear that, because there's no radio on this. So here we have our pedals, our shifter lever, lever pardon me, our emergency brake, as well as the steering wheel and the steering column. Pretty groovy. Here we have panel 6B. These are our bucket seats going in, which would be the racing style bucket seats. And now here's our big roll bar. You see there's it's a loop at the back and then two braces toward the front. And then there's a cross brace in here with the fire extinguisher on it. Which you paint gloss red and aluminum. It says roll bar center brace. So there's all our interior going together ready for Sebring. Panel 7 shows our body assembly with our rear license plate, the taillight bezels, and our two taillights going all in place. Remember, one of these is going to be painted white here as our backup light. Again, if you are familiar with the 68 Corvettes from Monogram, or Ravel, pardon me, this is the same assembly procedure. Here we have our ram air chamber, which glues underneath our hood. And then our front grille goes on, and our hood will slip into place in here very nicely. And continuing with our body assembly, we have the inner fenders going in, the expansion tank gluing onto the inner fenders. We have our windshield, which goes up in there. There's a little bar in here on our body, which we've got to remove. The interior bucket will then slip into place. And then if we move our instructions up here, you'll see our lovely firewall going in with the wiper canister on here, the master cylinder and the brake booster all goes in up under that body. Panel 8 shows our chassis and body assembly with that popping all together nicely. 
And here are some exhaust hitters with side pipes that I have not seen in any other Corvette kits of this era. These ones are the big noodly types, which are really cool, which go up underneath in here. Panel 9 shows our final assemblies of this kit. Here we have the racing side mirror going into place. And then it says here to add these decals on and then put these plastic light covers over the top. So uh, Ravel in this way has not made separate components underneath there, but the end result will look nice. There's our little top going on with the rear view window popping in. And then our gas cap going on here. And we also have rear fender flares just to fatten this out and make it look a little more racy. Finally on the back we have our decal placement and it says to paint the car gloss white and then you can put on all these nice racing decals. As you can see it is quite a lot on here and will look very nice in your finished model kit. It says option use duct tape to cover headlight covers so they give you uh, some duct tape decals I guess to cover this up to make it look right. Anyway it is quite a nice looking kit. And that will conclude our look at the instruction sheet for our John Greenwood Star and Stripe Corvette from Sebring 1971. And here we have our 1968 Corvette body, which is the basis for this 71 Sebring car. And, well, like Jerry Reed said, when you're hot, you're hot. So here's our hot body. Why make any changes to perfection on here? This is a great kit. Although it would be nice if it was the 71 body with the actual egg crate grills in here. Although, you know, you want to be accurate to the real car. So as you can see, there are quite a lot of neat things in here. This is actually a 68 Corvette because there's the door lock buttons sunken into the front fenders. The 69 wouldn't have had that, of course. It'd all be part of the handle. But anyway, gee, now I'm beginning to wonder what is the basis for this car. As you can see, you got your round taillights in there with the parking lamps down below. So yeah, that is a 68 for sure. Uh, there's our little fish gill vents. Again, this is a great kit. There are some old marks in here. Again, for your number 16 hobby blade. And then a little bit of uh, mold crunch in there. But overall, most excellent. There's the vents back there and the Corvette emblem on the trunk. So again, another awesome body by Ravel. Here we have our white components for our kit. And as you can see, there are quite a lot. There's actually five parts trees. So we're just going to look at the first two here before I put on the second three. Now, there are a lot of new components in here, uh, you know, compared to the other 67, 68, actually 68, 69 Corvettes that I've done in the past from Ravel. So here you can see our interior tub. There's our two pieces of the engine block, our fuel, or yeah, water pump there. There's our bucket seats for racing, our inner fenders, these great big noodly style exhaust manifolds. There's our roll bar and our pedals. Here's the new blanked out dashboard for racing, the firewall, the front suspension and rear suspension components all in here, as well as our radiator hoses here and our chassis. So let's bring this up to the camera. I'm kind of interested in seeing the racing dashboard and whatnot. So there it is. Like I said, there's not even an 8-track player in there. It's all strictly racing. And there's our firewall. This is quite a neat addition to the kit. The... Um, front suspension, rear suspension components, and of course you can see all the nice detail underneath there. Turning it over, again great detail. Might be a few mold marks in here, just smooth them out so the interior shell fits in nicely. But overall, very nicely done. Again, an exceptional kit from Ravel. And then we're going to take a look at, there's our, yeah, our engine block there. So again, you can see everything, like the frost plugs and all of that. Let's just take a look at the interior. Very typical to the Corvette. And there's the little pinholes there for your roll cage to fit in. Which you got to drill out, just so it's accurate. Then we've got those nice bucket seats there, which is not found in the stock kit. As well as our exhaust manifolds. 
Again, very nicely done from Ravel. So let's just put these two pieces together again. And then we'll check out our groovy other three parts trees. And here we are with our other three parts trees, which is really quite groovy. And there's something I've noticed here, which I haven't seen in any of the other Corvette kits, and that is a separately molded front and rear bumpers in white plastic. And then, of course, there's our top there. And then here's our fender flares for making the back end a little wider which I would actually glue on the body before you paint the body, not like how they show in the instructions there with you building the whole car and then putting these on at the end. Also, there's our hood. There's our blanked out inner door panels, all our radiator supports, the seat backs for the stock version, which you won't need. There's our wheel backs, our uh, pulley. The ram air thing goes under the hood. There's a little special ram air air cleaner in there. Our exhaust manifolds for the stock version, which again you're not going to be using because you'll be using these side pipes here for racing. There's our roll bars. There's the fan shroud. The um, cylinder heads. The stock exhaust manifolds, which you're not going to be using either. The stock door handles. <laughs> There's our steering column. Um, the windshield wiper motor. The starter, I do believe, or the oil filter, one of the two. There's our brake master cylinder. Oh, there's the starter motor there. There's the steering column, our drive shaft, the the brake cylinder there, uh, distributor and fan, and that's basically it. So let's take a look at some of these racing components here in more detail. There's our door blanks. That's actually how they would have done it back in the day. Just cover them over. And there's all our components. Very nice detail on it. Again, under the hood, a couple little mold marks. But overall, really nice. Of course, this motor is a big 427. And then here we've got our, our uh, grill there. Kind of hard to see the vents in it. But it is correct for 68. And there's our roof again. And then here we've got our other components. So again, some nice, clean, crisp detail on this. It's nice to see the addition of the racing components. And now we can go and take a look at the chrome. And now for my most favorite part of all the model kits, of course, is the chrome. And as you can see, there is a lot of it, but there is a lot of stock components on here. So we sort of have to weed some of them out like these side moldings, rocker panel moldings, which will be eliminated. Then we've got... Wait a minute. Oh, okay. Next, we get into my favorite component, which of course is the chrome. And there are a lot of stock components on here, which we're not going to be using, such as the chrome rocker panel covers, which of course will be too heavy for racing. <laughs> There we have our, these are almost like American Meg style wheels. One thing I noticed, so I looked at the Baldwin Motion Kit. These ones do not have the caps in the center, so they are a little different. There's our front grill in chrome. Uh, then we have all our little components. There's the rear taillight bezels, the rear license plate. There's a triangular air cleaner, which again is not one the one we're using. We've got the Ram Air hood on this. Then uh, there's our little motors and the springs, the alternator, uh, valve covers, intake manifold, all kinds of cool things. You may want to dull this down to make it more like aluminum. Look at the real car first though to make sure that's supposed to be chrome or not. Again, there's a carburetor. Again, very nicely detailed, the crisp parts. There of course are the wheels and our grill. Again, all nicely done by Ravel. Here's there's some mold marks along the back. I would paint, scrape them down, paint all this flat black so you don't see it from up underneath the car. But again, really cool stuff and really nicely done. Here we have our clear components. And as you can see, we've got that nice windshield there as well as the rear window and our four little taillights. And then we have the custom racing style 
uh, light covers, which again are very nicely done. So as you can see here, if I can get in focus, very nice. It, luckily there wasn't any scratches on this for it sitting loose in the box. But again, this is the right thickness you want for your clear plastic components. So Ravel again has done a very nice job. And if we take a look at the rear tail lights, um, I'm zoomed right in here, but you can actually see the reflector circle in there. So again, very nice. And because this has little reflectors down underneath, you don't actually need to paint the white backup light in there. Um, that came a little later. But again, nicely done kit. Next up, we have these nice tires from Ravel. And unfortunately, there are no manufacturer names in here, so they could be anything you want, which is actually quite good in a way. <laughs> As you can see, we've got the thicker rear tires and the thinner um, front tires. There is a nice tread pattern on here, but there is also a big seam line running up the middle. So you're going to have to spin these tires in your drill press somehow and sand the edges. But overall, they should look like the correct style racing tires. Here we have our wonderful Stars and Stripes decal sheet. And as you can see, it is full of Stars and Stripes. There's the blue or the white stars on the blue background here for the front. And I like how they have the components cut away here. You're going to have to use your hobby knife and really go around inside here to get this all correct before you put it on the car. There's our number 48 for Mr. Greenwood. And here you can see our American flag, which goes in on our hood. All this stuff is designed to fit together, so when you open up the hood, it doesn't break the decal, which is really nice. And there's our headlights in here. I do believe these are duct tape stripes for the alternate version. There's the decal for our cowl. And then the one on the roof, and here's for the rear deck lid going up in here, as well as our various manufacturers. Now that's interesting. These are all broken off into little bits. I have to take a look at where those go. And then we also have these little stars in here as well, which are really quite interesting. So again, very nicely done. Very colorful from Ravel. And that completes our look at John Greenwood's Stars and Stripes Corvette Sebring 1971. And if you've built this model kit in the past, we would love to see photos of it over on our Facebook page. But let us know how you liked it, how well you thought it went together, and what you might be able to do to improve the kit. Well, I sure hope you enjoyed that great unboxing video, and thank you once again to James for letting us review this amazing model kit. And if you love these great videos, you're going to love the one that's coming up next week. Another great car from 1971. So don't forget to like, subscribe, and share this channel with all your friends and family. Pound that notification bell so every time I make a new video, you are the first ones to see it. And if you want to get great model kits at a good discount, don't forget to visit us at www.monster-hobbies.ca and sign up for that newsletter so that you get to see our great flyers and discounts when they come out. And until next time, everybody, happy racing!